<laughs> Amen. It's going to be all right. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Good to have you here tonight. Amen. In Bible class, it's good to be back from J.A. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord. Amen. The Lord brought me back in one piece and not pieces, and I am glad. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And Sunday, I'll give you more information about that missionary trip in J.A. So welcome, everybody. Good to have you here tonight. I believe we're going to Genesis chapter 34. Amen. And I've been following and listening. And uh, tonight we're going to chapter 34. Sister Sharon, good evening again to all of you. Good evening. Blessings to all of you. Everyone that's joining us online, we want to greet you and salute you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Genesis chapter 34, I believe we're going to be having a microphone, you can help us. But in 34, it says, verse 1, it says, Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, she went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, prince, of the country, saw her, he took her, and lay with her, and violate her. Somebody say, Lord of mercy. Hmm? Somebody needs to stay home, praise God. So sad, don't it? Hmm? So sad. Third verse, it says, his soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman, and he spoke kindly to the young woman. Then if he loved the young woman, why did he rape her? Verse 4. So Shechem spoke to the father, Hagmar, saying, Get me this young woman as wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah. Hmm, his daughter. Now his son was with the livestock in the field, so Jacob held his peace until they came home. Then Homer, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the son of Jacob came in from the field, and they heard all about the confusion. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had because of what he has done that disgrace the thing in Israel by laying with Jacob's daughter. But Hamar spoke to them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. Parents, what would you say? And make marriage with us and give us your daughter to us and take our daughters to yourself. So you shall dwell with us in the land. And there in the land you will trade with us and acquire possession for yourself in it. Verse 11. Then Shechem said, to her father and her brothers. Let me find favor in your eyes and whatever you say to me that I will do. Ask me ever so much a diary and gift and I will give according to what you say to me but give me this young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob, they answered Shisham and, and Hamar, his father, and they spoke deceitfully. Somebody remember this word, deceitfully. That runs in the family, don't it? <laughs> because he have defiled Dinah, their daughter. And they said to them, we cannot do this thing to give you our sister to one who is uncircumcised. For that would be of a reproach unto us Israelites. 
But on this condition, will we consent with this one consent? If you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, verse 16, then we will give you our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. Somebody said the devil is a liar. <laughs> oh God. Verse, seven, verse 17. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised as us, then we will take our daughters and we'll be gone. And their words pleases Hamar the father and Shisham and Hamar's sons. So the young man did, did not delay to do the thing. Because he delighted as Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the household of his father. Verse 20. And Hamar, the Shushem, his son, this is confusion, don't it? Anybody get in this confusion? So Hamar, the Shushem, his son, he came to the gate of the city, and he spoke with the men of their city, saying, These men are at peace with us, are they? And everybody smile with you, you know, and talk with you, is with you. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade in it, for indeed the land is large enough for them. Let us take their, their daughters to us as wife, and let us give them our daughters. 22nd verse. Only in this condition will the men consented to dwell with us, to be a one people. If every male amongst us is circumcised, as they are circumcised as Jews, will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us consent it to them. And they will dwell with us in Canaan. 24 verse. And all who went out of the gate of the city. Heeded to the instruction of Hamar. And Shisham his son. Every male was circumcised. And all who went out of the gate of the city. 25th verse. Now it came to pass. That on the third day. When they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, how many sons he had? Simeon or Simon and Levi. Dino's brother, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and kill all the males. 26 verse. And they kill Hamar, the father, and Shishem, his son, with the edge of the sword, and they took Dinah back from Shishem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came up, and they slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. 28 verse, 34 chapter. They took their sheep, their oxen, their donkeys, what was in the city and what was in the field. And all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives and they took captive and they plunder even all that was in the house and the houses nearby. And Jacob said to Simon or Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me by making me obnoxious amongst the inhabitants of the land, amongst the Canaanites and the Parasites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me, and I shall be destroyed, my house and I. But they say, should we treat our sisters like an orlet? Hmm? Should he treat our sister like an orlot, let us pray. Father, we bow our heads today. We humble ourselves. 
before these passages of scriptures tonight. And Lord, we ask you to speak to us on the matters of this scripture. That tonight as we are here, we will not leave here the same way we came. But God, whatever is in this word for us tonight, show it to us. Let teaching come easy. Let the word come easy. Let the revelation come easy. Oh God, that your people before we separate here tonight will grab a hold of what is in it for them. Lord, speak now. Wayne is human being, Wayne is flesh and blood, but the spirit of the living God that dwells on Wayne. Speak through me like a vessel from heaven. Bless us even now, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. When I read this passage of scripture, I realize this is confusing. It troubled me earlier today. And it still troubles me now. Why? Because I am now seeing some similarity in the problem that is in America today and around the world that way back then in Genesis chapter 34, this problem existed. Come on, somebody. We are learning that what we are seeing happening today in our land is nothing new. As the Bible declares, there is nothing new under the sun. You know, I am glad for the opportunity. I was in Jamaica and I was able to go to a church in Portmore to speak. And uh, my sister came with me and my mom came with me and two of my nieces came with me and, and my brother-in-law came with me and a couple of the Omega Church members that moved to Jamaica, Portmore, found out I was there and they came with me. And as we gathered there, I began to introduce the people that came with me. And as I introduced the people that came with me, I realized that in a church with maybe 300 people, uh, there is a group of people that know me and there is a larger group of people that really don't know me and so the people that know you are the people that will go the extra mile for you are you with me so far and what we're going to see tonight is this family this is Jacob family he has been delivered from Laban's house he has reconciled with his brother and now he's free to live his own life Paul but 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 there are some things in the bloodline Sharon that remain there and it's amazing that what's done in secret have a way to come back in the light. So even though he, is, as he has escaped Laban abuse. He has reconciled with his brother. Now he's on his own. And he's changed. And he's more mature. And he's getting older. But now the bloodline. There is some problem in the bloodline. I believe that before you and I came along. There our ancestors that have gone on before us. Ah, uh, there was some conflict in the bloodline. Come on, somebody. And, and you and I today are, are dealing with those conflict in the family bloodline. Let's, let's stop there for a moment. You'll find out that there are members in your family that have sugar and, and diabetes and, 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 and high blood pressure and, and, and the list goes on. And you realize that generation down the road there, there, there's some trace of that similarity that showed up even when members of their family migrated far away. They love the same kind of food. They prepare the food the same way. And, 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 and so the same kind of disease showed up back in the family. 
What I am learning here is that there are things that are hidden deep in the bloodline that you can't look at with a normal glass and you can't read uh, with a normal glass. But, but there's something spiritually uh, intertwined into the DNA that you don't even know about, Sharon. You don't even know about Deacon. But, but, but we begin to feel a certain way. Uh, are you with me so far? Somebody said the bloodline. The bloodline is deeper than you and your children. The bloodline is deeper than your husband and your husband, the children in the house. There is a bloodline before you and there will be a bloodline long after you. And what you do will, in, will affect you or bless you. Or affect the bloodline down the line. Or bless the bloodline down the line. Come on somebody. We talk about generational curse. But we also need to talk about generational blessings. But in this case we are going to be looking at a deceitful lineage here. Jacob was a very ambitious fast thinking man. He, he knew how to resolve conflict. And now we're going to see it show up in two of his sons. The first time we're hearing about Jacob and his children. We know he has 12 sons. We don't hear much about Dinah. No, don't it? Anybody here hear much about her? You heard about the 12 tribe of Israel, but you don't hear much about Dinah. But now we're going to be seeing some familiar, fam, familiarity now in the bloodline when the first time we're going to hear about Jacob's daughter. Now, now, now uh, uh, they say I look like my father, but I act like my mother. Somebody said the bloodline. You can't escape it. Uh, I look like my father and uh, uh, I look like his, his side of the family. But I get my zeal and my spirituality and my ambitiousness, my ambition from my mother's side of the family. So I was there in Jamaica as my mother. I was given the opportunity and, uh, to take her to Helsha. I hear you guys talking about Helsha all the time and fish. Uh, I finally get me one. Praise God. You don't need to show off on me no more. Let me just rub that in there somewhere. Amen. Glory be to God. I have to. I have to. Thank you, Jesus. So I've been to Elsha to get a fish. Praise God. And I promised the pastor there, I'm going to tell you all. Amen. So for all of you for several years been showing off on me with fish in Elsha. I've been there. Praise God. Feels good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So I took my mom there. The first Mother's Day I had to spend with my mom. It was such a blessing. Amen. And the first one away from my beloved. But the point I'm trying to make to you, my brothers and my sister, it's simple. As we go further and dig further into the bloodline and the lineage. Come with me now. The bloodline and the, the lineage. This is not about fish and hellsha. Praise God. You with me? I'm going somewhere. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm going to dig deep tonight. Amen. Because there are some things in the bloodline that we overlooked. There are some things that we are fighting in the bloodline that we overlooked. We inherit stuff in the bloodline, Pastor Morgan. And we, you, you, you could be doing your best. Trying your hardest. Huh? Working towards life. Doing things the right way. And there are some things that follow you. Oh my God, I wish if I have somebody that understand what I'm talking about here. Uh, what's following you? What's following you in the bloodline? It's not you. You did not touch it. You, 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 if you were given the same circumstances, you would have handled it better. You would have handled it differently. But you ever find yourself dealing with the same problem that that generation ago had? I know bloodline and a bloodline of, of, of women that, that their husband died in the family. Almost every female their husband died in a family. Are you with me so far? Huh? And so why is that happening again? 
I'm saying there are some things in the generation before you. And you and I are feeling it today. Come on with me now. We're feeling it today. And when you want to go so, but you have to go so. And when you look at it, your great great grandmother have gone so. So I'm at fish, I'm having dinner with my mom, and I'm saying, Mom, um, you know, so I'm picking her brain, you know, she's 70 something years old, praise God. She lost her husband, so I'm taking it easy with the lady. So I'm picking her brain. So I said, I went down to the to the we call it coffee piece, this garden in America. And I'm picking up a few mangoes and it feels good. And I'm looking at the banana trees and I've seen banana everywhere. But I remember I got to go to Walmart to go buy a banana. They have banana there growing and just bending over, looking at me. So I asked my mom something. I said, Mom, I, I noticed my great-grandmother, her name was Rachel Aton. And the grave is messy because mango blossom comes and falls on it and... And, 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 and pear avocado falls on it and coffee falls on it and everything. So I said, Ma, I was talking to my mom. I said, tell me something about grandma. Uh, 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 tell me a little bit. She said, we get this hustle and this ambition from that dead woman you see down there. Come with me, somebody. I'm going somewhere. Follow me. Don't, 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 don't lose me yet. So she died many, must have 40 years ago or 50 years ago. I remember my mom began to tell me also that when she died and I was three years old and, and she came home and she said, oh, granny died, Wayne. And I started to clap my hand. Yeah, granny died, granny dead. Three-year-old kid. How many of you get it? You can laugh, you know. <laughs> I don't know why it takes so long to get the joke. <laughs> Or maybe if you get it now, huh? I was three years old, I'm told, mama told me, uh, granny dead. I don't understand. I start clapping my hand, yeah, granny dead, granny dead, granny dead. <laughs> three years old. But as you become older now, you realize that somebody telling you somebody died, you don't granny dead, granny dead, and have church. You don't do that. You're concerned. You're sympathetic. But I was three years old. Come with me. So my mom was telling me that the ambition and the zeal and that drive, it comes from her. So as I read this scripture tonight, and it troubles me, I'm saying, if you can get your hustle and your ambition and, and, and your spirituality from someone in the bloodline, what else do we get in the bloodline? What else is running us down in the bloodline? Deep down there that you yourself, you feel a certain way and you shouldn't feel that certain way, but you end up feeling a certain way. Come with me somebody. Uh, and, and something happening in the blood, something is happening in the DNA before you were born, you inherited this. So we inherited the blessings and we inherited the, the curse. We inherited the trace. We inherited the bloodline. We even inherited the looks. And I believe that Jacob and his sons was dealing with some inheritance problem. Are you with me so far? Let's go back to the scripture. So number one, verse number one, uh, the young lady, Dinah, what happened? She moved to a new town in, the, in, the, in, in, in Canaan. And what did she do? She put on her short skirt and went out the road. Oh, you're not talking to me. You're not talking to me. Oh, Lord Jesus. Now help me, Jesus. I say something is in the bloodline. And it lied deep. So who talked to Dinah and said, Dinah, verse 1, go and check out the community. The Bible didn't say she wore a short skirt. That was just me being in humor. Praise God. Amen. 
But she's in a new city, she's in a new town, she's in a new place, she's in a new country. They just move and they settle in the land of Canaan. And the Bible said that she got up and went to go walk the town to see what the girls were doing. Is that what's in your Bible? Listen, I believe that you got to be careful where you go, how you go, where you spend time. Had Dinah stay home, we would have read a different story here tonight. The sons, the 12 sons of Jacob, were lying dormant. They went out to take care of the animal. The sister was supposed to be at home. But today, something tell her to get up and go to the street. Something in the bloodline. Now my question for bringing you to my mother and Fish and Elsha and my grandmother and all these things is on purpose. What is in this girl that today at this time she has to get up out of her house and just go walk the street to see what the girls in the streets are doing? Hmm? Why? Why? Why today? You just moved to a new city. In other words, you moved to Coral Springs, but you go into the mall. You ever see people at the mall just walking, seeing what everybody's doing? Those things will get you in trouble, you know. I don't like shopping, so don't invite me. I'm not coming. Come on with me, somebody. So now she's out there in the community now and seeing what the girls in the community are doing. She have no business to be doing that in the first place. But give her the benefit of the doubt. Because she was about to interrupt the community innocently. What makes she did that? What makes she done that? What makes she have to get up that day? Not the day before, not the week before, not the year before, not the month before. But today she got to get up and go to the street. And you say, well, Bishop, is something wrong with a young lady get up and walk in the town and seeing how the city is? No, but I would recommend wait for your brothers. But destiny must be fulfilled. That's not the way God wants them, first of all. They were at the wrong place, at the wrong time, in the wrong city. And whenever we are in the wrong place, at the wrong time, it's the devil playground. Because our ancestors have stuff in them that the devil show up and use. Now, the Bible didn't tell us how Dinah dressed. So we can't assume that she was dressed inappropriately or appropriately. But the Bible taught me there in the second verse. Look at verse 2 there. Huh? Now, this young man with a funny name. What's his name? His name is Shishem. How do you put a she before a male man's name? And then the Bible described him that he was a prince. So he saw her coming. You think this was the first time he saw her coming? No. You think this was the first time he saw her coming? I try my best to protect my children. When we go to new cities and we're doing radio ministries and all these things, I'm the last one to go to the door. <laughs> because you have to be so careful. So do you think that Shishem saw her for the first time? Hello. He's been checking her out. But now she's alone. Come on somebody. She's alone. And now he made her move. Look, look what the scripture said. He captured her and violated her. Rape her. What a pervert. Come on somebody. You capture the man daughter. Paul. And then rape the man daughter. Bishop then he said. Huh? Then he talks with Nestor. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. This is confusing. Because after he raped the man daughter, and this was a man of God, daughter, hmm? he raped the little girl, the young lady, and, 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 then, and then he speak what? Kindly. Kindly. What does it say there? <laughs> no, you ever hear any nonsense like this in your life? How do you rape the girl and then you say you love the girl? Look at it. Look, look with me. Look with me. Hmm? He, the Bible said he, he violated her. Look at the third verse. Come with me. Hmm? His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah. You raped the girl with your lost self. You feel me? And then you turn around now and ready to talk that, that, that you're in love with her. 
When you're in love with somebody, Sister, Sister Gloria, would you rape the person? Come on, somebody. Paul, would you, when I'm in love with Elizabeth, I walk on eggshell because I want to do everything right so the woman love me back. Come on, somebody. Huh? When I see her, Evangelist Natalia, I, I, I walk, I talk straight, and I use proper English. But look what the brother did. What he did. Come with me, man. Come with me. And then he lied. He says now that, look, 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 look the third verse. He said, uh, he was strongly attracted to Dinah. I hate to hear the idea, evangelist, that people said, if, if somebody said that to me in Jamaica the, when I was there the other day, I said, uh, what is love, Uncle Wayne? And, and before I could get a chance to explain it, it says to me, uh, I'm talking about something in the bloodline now. The young man said to me, is it true that when a man beat a woman, that shows that... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it, it shows that, that, that he love her. Jamaica, right. Sister Natalie, you hear something like that. <laughs> you mean to tell me that the man have to beat you to verify to you that he is in love with you? Some woman like to be slapped around? Oh my. That is not love. For the record tonight, let me look in the camera. Praise the Lord. That is not love. That is abuse. Hallelujah. Hello. And none of my spiritual daughter don't tell me that the man have to punch you. And that's how you feel special. The devil is a liar. I'm coming home with the oil. <laughs> I'm coming with three quarter gallon. Praise God. I'm going to go aisle up everything. Because there's some things in the, in the bloodline that I need to get rid of. He don't need to beat you. Eh? If he beat you and you say, oh yeah, my mama used to get whoop. <laughs> so, 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 so and, and my daddy used to love my mama and beat her. So you got to beat me. Somebody said the devil is a liar. Don't let nobody bring those abuse to you. And I got to fix it too because I heard that to the, the, the grapevine that women are beating man too. And when the woman beat the man, they say she loves me. <laughs> Don't do it. Are you with me so far? So she raped, he raped the girl. And then look at verse 4. Now in verse 4, this is why I got to read and stop and say this don't make no sense. Now look in the fourth verse. After he raped a prophetic man of God's daughter. Oh my God. Then he's talking to the father now and said, I want her to be my wife. First of all, the Jewish custom is that the woman keep herself. She abstain from, 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 from fornication. And that make her special. You uh, Now, in your Kenyan custom, you rape anybody, take anybody, but in the Jewish order, you, you defile. Come on with me now. What's in the bloodline? Hmm? What are we fighting? Come with me, man. Come with me. So in the fourth verse, you know, now, 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 now Shisham, with a female name, spoke to his father concerning uh, uh, the queen and the only queen. Can you imagine Jacob have 12 sons and he have one daughter? I want to understand that this young lady has to be special. And they move into the land of Canaan and, and it's like everybody that's special to Jacob cause him pain. You ever find out that people that are dearest to you cause you pain? The only daughter, 12 sons, one daughter, and the enemy set up the one daughter because she walked out to the town gate. The devil is a liar. So now this rapist son named Shushem went to his own father and said, I want to marry this girl. Daddy, I want to marry this girl. Which one of you as parent in this room tonight? Deacon Miller. Your son did done something like that. And then say to you, 
in the condescending, disrespectful tone. Daddy, I raped the girl, but I want to marry her. What would you say? That would be very disrespectful. It is. You don't throw some lick on the boy, man. <laughs> I want to. What are you going to say, sister? Huh? He's going to come to you and say, in guilty. But the reason why in guilty is because he's madly in love with. I don't know how to be an American or a European parent, you know. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Come Lord. on. So, so, so now he brought that madness in verse 4 to his father. Huh? To his own father. And describing the young lady in verse 4. Look at verse 5. And Jacob heard that. Oh God. Come on now. A Christian man of God is hearing hypocrisy. Hearing evil. Hearing rape. Come on. With my one daughter evangelist. I said the little boy in me don't want to hear that. The little boy in me can't handle that. Hello, somebody. Natalie, I know the little girl in you can't handle that. Mm -mm. No, sir. Uh-uh. I, I, I can't deal with the level of that disrespect. So Jacob is there listening to the rapist talking to his father concerning his only daughter that he just raped. So Jacob just remained silent. I have never seen Jacob in scripture remain silent. He remained silent. All that we have read about this man, he's never yet silent one day in his life. But no, he's listening to the conversation which was disrespectful, condescending, disgraceful, shameful, you just move in town and your daughter get raped. And, and, and he's now listening to the conversation between the father and the son. Who is the rapist that you want to marry my daughter. How do you put love and marry in the same conversation when you violate my family. My family is a family of God. God, we go to bed thinking God, sleeping at the middle of the night thinking God, wake up at the breakfast table thinking God, and you have shamed my house, and now you have the audacity to tell me you want to marry to my daughter. As long as God live, I don't want to see you, much less to see you in my family, because you have Pain something and the little boy in me better stay silent because if I open my mouth I am going to push thump and box because you have passed your avenue a long time ago. There are some things in our bloodline. Some, some things in our bloodline we don't hang up conflict properly. So Jacob just remained he remained silent until his son come. My qualms in our brother Paul is that Jacob is not a man that remains silent. Amen. In cheating brother, cheating father, cheat labor. <laughs> but now he is silent. What do you why do you think Jacob is now silent? You know, Bishop, I don't. <laughs> Talk to me. You know, I don't. Bishop, you know. Yeah. Talk to me. Look at Jacob, man mannerism, mm -hmm. and the way he he normally do things. Mm -hmm. Now to come upon a situation that offend him so badly, you know, he know has to be silent because no, I don't know if he was thinking back on what he and his mother did to his father. You know, I don't think so. Well, 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 we well, can well, speculate. We can speculate. I say, I don't, you know, what do you think he was doing? Why was he silent? Sometimes, you know, Bishop, sometimes you might, sometimes, you know, when something happens, you might, you might not 
react right away. You might have to shut your mouth and think back to say, you know, because you might have to think back and say, let me shut my mouth right now because if I do this now, I might offend God. But let me, so I might have to take a day mm -hmm. to process it. Like in this case, he said, my with his sons. Mm -hmm. Because the sons might have a better, me and me, a better understanding when, when they gather to talk. But, but you know, Bishop, but uh -huh. to say that, yeah. There are a lot of Jacobs in the world today. Because oh, my God. Talk to me. You know I mean? There are a lot of Jacobs in the world today. Because Can I have a question for you now? Speed it up. Yeah, man. There are a lot of Jacobs in the world, you know, and a lot of parents and children that have been raped. The rapists always come and say, I love her, I want married. And, and, and I almost said idiots, but idiots do allow them to get married. And I just don't understand how a parent can look at a rapist day in, day out when you rape that my daughter and my, and, my, and my son and say, you are my in-law. I just don't get it, but... In today's society, it's still here like it was then. Okay, Brother Paul, I really believe that Jacob remains silent, not by choice. <laughs> I believe that, no, in past shock, long time. Past surprise, long time. Him looking at himself in jail. Come on, him seeing him machete. Cause these men use bows and arrows and machete. When 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 people hurt you to a point in a man of God, and you have a God inside of you, you know, and you know once upon a time what you would have done, once upon a time what you would have done, once upon a time you have your thing by you, God Almighty, I, I, I feel good now, and, and once upon a time. Time. I know what to do. I wrestle donkey and cow and bears and sheep. My brother, stronger than me, hearier than me. I lied to my father. I crossed Jordan. You're not talking to a wimp, you know. Let me describe Jacob. You're talking to a warrior. And, and the warrior instinct I can only imagine he was probably holding himself back. Say, Jacob, behave yourself. Jacob, stay still. God in Jacob, hold me, God. Don't let me go, God. I've been a warrior all my life, and this is something for me to kill somebody, God. But Jesus, hold me right hand. Jamaica, another word for that. They call it bringo. That means you passed mud a long time ago. And you want to hangle it. <laughs> Jacob said. When people don't say nothing sometimes. You see them silent. You see them quiet. Silent river run deep. You know sister. Hello. Not because somebody don't say nothing. You notice most time you know. The people that will do terrible things. Are the people that remain silent. And, and the people that have big mouth. Loud mouth. Loud noise are usually the, the, the coward. Am I making sense, Natalie? Makes the most noise, no? Hmm? Come on now. Are you with me tonight? Hmm? Take a look. Let's go down to the seventh verse. There's something in the bloodline, man. That boy, Shisham, that raped that girl, there's something in his bloodline, in his culture. That allow him to do that. I guarantee you the father was a rapist too. Yeah. That's right. If I should check the history and the record. His father was a, a rapist too. Come on now. Because uh, you, you, you think my son could come and tell me something like that. Me I lock him up before the cop come. Right him under house arrest. Uh, no because I raise you right. Treat you right. Feed you right. Educate you right. And you're telling me that you raped somebody and then you want to marry their daughter. No, the police got to take me off of you. Are you with me, somebody? Let's look at verse 7. Something is in the bloodline. So verse 7 now, the brothers came home. Look at that, verse 7. So the sons of Jacob, they came in from the field when they heard it. Huh? And then the men were grieved and was what? Very angry. 
because he had done this graceful thing to Israel, Jacob, by lying with Jacob's daughter. And the thing which he has done. How many of you ever heard this idiotic ideology that Christians shouldn't get angry? Anybody? Let me step on your toe, Deacon. You hurt? Come on, Sister Gloria. Don't make nobody tell you foolishness that Christians don't, don't get angry. We know how to control it or make a choice to control it. But if you step on your toe, honey, you're going to hurt. And more than likely, the little girl in here, the little boy, will you push me off? I said, boy, don't you know you hurt me? But I'm the bishop, don't call me a boy. But right now you are, a, you is a boy. Because you're acting like one. Come on now. So, so, so angry but sin. Come on, that's what the word said. So being able to control it like Jacob. He controlled it. He want to box, thumb, kick. Come on now. But, 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 but he controlled it because of the God in him. But not every Christian person have the level of what Jacob display. Jacob was able to display that kind of self-control over getting angry because he grown. But a Christian that is not there yet will box you down and kick you down. And then, Lord, I'm sorry. Praise God. I'm going to church with my big Bible tomorrow. <laughs> Why? Because they're not there yet. Oh, you're not there yet, Sister Natalie. But you know, a lot of us, you know, confronted with a shameful, disgraceful position like this, then a lot of us were not there yet. You, you need Jesus. A lot and some of Jesus. So the brothers was angry in verse 7. They were angry. They were very angry. So they sat there in the meeting, Pastor Morgan. And they, they were so angry. The Bible said the men were angry. So it's one thing for the 12 brothers to be angry. But even the workers was angry. Everybody was angry. And poor Jacob have to be using diplomacy now. He, he, he's using diplomacy, trying to be proper. Because he is in their country. And he's talking to the leaders in the country. And he has to be proper. But the sons and the men, they were what? Come on, man. Say. They were angry. It is one thing for somebody to be angry, Sister Sharon. And sweep it under the rug. And talk to your sweet. Hello. Anybody here with me? I'm going to sweep it under the rug. But I'm planning what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> That's what happened. What did the brother they do? What did they do? They swept it politically. Temporary. Under the rug. And strategize what to do. Huh? Come with me, man. Come with me. Let's go down now to the next verse. Let's go to verse 10. Look at verse 10. Hmm? Verse 10. So, so they're sat in, they sit there in the meeting and they're listening to the conversation that the rapist and his father is negotiating. And these boys was boiling with anger on the inside while the rapist and the father of the rapist is there talking about diplomacy. How you will take my daughter and I will give you our daughter and we will live together work together, trade together, sleep together and, and, and Jacob's son is just there can't wait come on when the politics is over, verse 10, look at that that's what they said so you shall dwell with us in the land and shall be before you and dwell and trade in it and acquire possession for yourself in it, come on somebody, go to verse 12 let's go to verse 12 Verse 12. And he says, ask me ever so much for a diary. Everybody know about a diary. A diary is when somebody comes to marry my daughter Hortensia. The parents of that son have to give me a big check, in other words. Uh-huh. And if the check is big enough, then I said, okay, you can marry into the bloodline. But if I don't like the check, 
after you rape my daughter, you're suggesting to give me a check? How many parents you know will take that? Come, come, come on. Say it like you believe it, man. Are you, you don't believe it? Look at the 13th verse. Come with me now. Hmm? But the son, so all along was Jacob talking. But now the sons is about to talk. Oh God, I feel God here now. Come on somebody. The, the, the father is talking to Jacob. But now the son is about to respond for the first time. The only response we had from the son so far is that they were angry. They didn't say another word. Now here is what they're going to say now. Look what they're going to be saying in verse 13. Are you there with me family? Huh? It says, but the sons of Jacob answer Shisham. Who they answer? The rapists. Come on, somebody. And Hamar, the father. And they spoke what? Look at that word there. Deceitfully. Say that word. Say that word. Deceitfully. Deceitfully. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to be saying now? What are they going to be saying? Talk to me, family. They, they, what, are, what is happening now, Brother Paul? Talk to me. Cause you get it. You get it? What's happening, Brother Paul? Yeah, no, the brother no scheming how to get back at them. Uh, so they're there, yap, 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 yap. And they're just planning. You rape my, you rape, you know, they're How saying, to take revenge. Yeah, you rape my sister, no, I'm going to plan for you. And so, daddy is agreeing for peace sake. Take my daughter. Give me the dowry. Now they open their mouth to speak. Not every time somebody not their head with you, you know, evangelist. Means that is a yes. Now every time somebody shake your hands, your hand, and you think it's a confirmation. These boys were sitting there and they were angry. You cannot make a deal with an angry person. Hello, somebody. Uh, Sister K, you cannot make a deal with a hungry person. And you should never be in the position to make a deal when you are angry. Because you're going to make inappropriate choices and decisions. Why? Because you are angry. Talk to me tonight. So the sons, they went on further because they were planning. A they were very deceitful. Come on with me. Look at verse 14. And they said to them, them who? The rapist and the father. We cannot do this thing to give you our sister to one who is uncircumcised. In other words, I'm a Christian. You're a sinner. I don't want my daughter to, 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 to marry in your family. I don't want my, my daughter to, to, to raise rapists. Come on, somebody. I'm a Christian. The Bible said we cannot be unequally yoked. I am circumcised. You are not circumcised. And the only way this would work is what? Unless you and the entire household become... Well, what, what, what do you mean? You're taking a sinful man that don't know nothing about circumcision and you're going to circumcise them. Where did they get that trace from? Their father. Their father was a general, very conniving, very smart, very ambitious. So what was the son saying? I'm going to set you up so good. I'm going to catch you so good that you don't even know what's coming. That's what he was doing. So he's telling that all of their house must take up the scissors and cut out the foreskin of their private area. You ever get cut with a needle? And the pain that comes tomorrow? Oh Lord, let me leave that alone. Come with me, man. Come with me. So, so the son says that. Let's jump down to verse 25. Hmm? So look at verse 25. Now it came to pass. Somebody said it came to pass. Came to pass. That the third day when they were in what? Look at that word. They were, so they were in what? The rapist was in pain in other words. Daddy was in pain. The brothers was in pain. Everybody was in pain. Tell me if Simeon and, and Levi is not Jacob's son. <laughs> Tell me if these two boys wasn't Jacob's son. Jacob knows how to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So what, what the son said to them. Now listen. Your whole old soul. We're going to take up a knife. We're going to circumcise you. First of all. This was not a Christian nation. This was a Gentile nation. They don't do that. But now when you have a lot of men in pain. Three days afterwards. 
You ever gone to the gym and you push, push, give, and three days afterward you're walking and limping? They were in pain. But the brother had a plan how to take revenge. The brother had a plan. So he waited until they were in pain. And look what happened. Come on, come on. Verse 25. Oh, look at verse 25. Hmm? So now we came to pass again. On the third day, when they were in pain, that the two of the sons of Jacob, huh? Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brother, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the men. Now, 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 you may say to yourself, well, well what, is, what exactly is a Christian man doing taking revenge when God says vengeance is, is mine? Come on, somebody. The kind of grace that we have today and the grace that was around then is two different grace. Mm -hmm. It was a plan all along. Because you can't be circumcised into the fate of Judaism. The priests have to sprinkle some things and lay hands on you and do some spiritual ritual. You can't just come out of being a Gentile because you cut off the foreskin and come over into God's people. It don't work like that. You got to do a whole lot of hoo hoo ha ha and a whole lot of priests laying hands on you and put oil on you. But they think by doing that that they become a part of the family. No, the devil is a liar. They, the sons were just setting them up when they are vulnerable, when they are weak, when they are in pain. That is the kind of pain that you cause my daughter, my sister. That is the kind of pain that you inflict when you violate my family. But I'm coming to get you and your whole soul. Good God Almighty. And so while they were in pain and shamble, uh, then these two brothers, not the 12 of them, just two, went right into their house the third day when they are in pain. Christian people, we got to know how to behave. We got to know how to act. We got to know what to do. We got to know when to strike. The enemy is a and attacking and attacking but we got to outsmart the enemy and his attack in his turf so while they were in pain and, 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 and things are happening and uh, running to the bathroom and doing all of that then these two brothers were so vicious that they went and annihilate the entire household and somebody may say wait a minute now where is the justice they took justice in their own hands and the Bible said they murdered them. Well, we are here tonight because God said thou shalt not kill. But I'm telling you what Simeon and Levi did. Levi became the son that gave birth to the Leviticus, the Leviticus bloodline, the Leviticus law. In other words, they become the priests later on after they repent. But let me ask you this, what would you do? What would you do, Pastor Margaret? Would you go pray about it? Deacon, would you go pray about it? Sister Miller, her name is Miller too, you know. And this is a Miller too. Would you go pray about it? Evangelist Paul, what would you do? Would you go pray about it? I'm talking to this side of the pretty ladies there. Would you go pray about it? I'm not teaching you all nothing about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wasn't around then. Amen. I'm telling you what happened then. Because God was a gangster then. Amen. I said God was a gangster then. God opened up hurt and swallowed people. box down people. Kill people. Thump down people. Don't mess with my people. Uh, you know, I, I find it amazing when people think that God is a play play God. God is a gangster. God is not a wimpy, wimpy God. Huh? God uh, people don't know God enough. People, <laughs> God is merciful and he's kind and he's thoughtful. And thank God for the day when he sent Jesus. Because if he did not send Jesus into this world, some people that are alive today would be dead. 
Some country would have been swallowed up in hole. Some city would have been buried underground. God a gangster. We thank God for Jesus. That show grace. Show mercy. Show forgiveness. Show forgiveness. Show forgiveness. Show forgiveness. But God will just deal with it one time. Get it over. Ah, bam. Dead. It done. Glory <laughs> be to God. So these boys went in and they killed everybody. And then, and then they went inside and then they did this part. Take back their sister. Come on. You're coming home. Huh? You're coming home. Huh? They went in and captured their sister and took her back home. These two boys just came down. <laughs> Natalie, they went there. You think their sister was happy? You think the sister was happy to be in a house where she was raped and molested by this man? Give up our virginity? You know how special that is? Give up our virginity, by, not by choice, but forcefully? You think she's living in this house, marrying to this man? Do you think that it was easy in her? I can guarantee you that woman went to her bed every day and killed this man. The, I'm telling you, uh, uh, the kind of pain that Dinah was dealing with living in that house and our two brothers just come and just beat them up and take them out I'm going to leave it there because if I was living in the Old Testament I'll do the same thing praise God Amen. can I keep it real here today thank God I'm living under Jesus grace Amen. today I'll go pray about it today praise God but if I was there you do that to my sister I'm coming to get you glory be to God I didn't know about Jesus <laughs> oh Jesus didn't come here to offer me, to teach me some sense. But vengeance is God. But they went in and took back their sister, evangelist. Huh? Can you imagine the healing that needs to take place in that girl's life? Huh? Can you imagine? If you're not careful, you hate your daddy. Who agreed to that? Can we leave that one alone or should we tap into that one? Your daddy said yes to the rapist to marry you. For diplomacy. For nice jacket. I'm the man. No, don't mess with my family, man. I take that personal. Praise the Lord. I take that personal. Off limit evangelist. Come on, somebody. Off limit. Huh? So, so they went in. They grabbed their sister. Grabbed the animal. Grabbed the sheep. Grabbed the donkeys. That's what the Bible said. Huh? God didn't tell them don't do it. God could have told them not to do it. God didn't say don't do it. They grab everything and say, come on, we're going home. We're going home. So now they arrive home. You look at the last verse. And Jacob saw them coming in blood. He said, and saw his daughter. Jacob said, you sh what have you done? Look at the word. Look at the word. Amen. <laughs> Jacob, oh, look, what, look what, what have you done? Huh? <laughs> what have you done? Look, verse 30. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me. Look who's talking about trouble, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the number one troublemaker. <laughs> it's amazing. Sometimes I see my children acting certain way. I say, Lord, I'm guilty. <laughs> I used to act like that with mama. Mama got to slap me. Yeah? But now the, the table is turned. I see my son when he's talking. <laughs> Mama used to lick me in the head with frying plan and say, boy, stop talk fast. But anyhow, look at this. Uh, uh, Jacob said, you have troubled me by making me what? Obnoxious. Read on a little further. Amongst the inhabitants of the land, amongst the Canaanites and the parasites, and since I have but a few number, what does that sound like to you? What does that sound like to you? Fear. Hmm? They will gather themselves together against me and kill me. Wait. Anybody listening to the silence in the room? The two boy came back. His daughter returned. He didn't say, welcome home, Diana. He didn't say, well, come home, Dinah. Instead, look what he said to the boys. You troubled me. He didn't say, well, come home. 
But in reality, a father will going to be like a father, don't it? He didn't say, welcome home, my daughter is home that was stolen. No, he began to say, they're going to gather a posse together to come kill me. He wasn't happy about it. And many of you may have mixed feeling about it because now the entire household is in trouble now because of what they have done. They took justice in their own hands. But the Bible taught us that justice and judgment is God's. But they take him back his daughter home. Safe and sound his only daughter. But look what he said. He was more concerned about himself. Have you ever been in a room with some people that they're only concerned about themselves? They don't care who get hurt. They don't care how you feel. They don't care what happened. They just care about themselves. Have mercy. He read on a little bit more. He says... He says, since I am a few in numbers and they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. And I shall be destroyed, my household and I. Well, wait a minute, brethren. I think, I think Jacob was on to something, but he didn't handle that very well, in my opinion. He didn't handle it very well. You feel me? Read on a little bit further there. Hmm? Verse 31, the final verse. He says, and they said, should he treat our sister like a harlot? What do you think, Pastor Margaret? What do you think, family? What was Jacob doing? And the sons, I don't know how you feel tonight, how the son handled this but when it comes to the matters of the family it's a very sacred thing your family is off limit to me my family is off limit to you but we are spiritually connected by God so the sons look at the father and says is it okay for these for this man to rape my sister and treat her like a whore. How is it okay with you, daddy? Basically, that's what he's saying. How? how, how? And, and, and daddy, look at what you say. They're going to come to kill me. Where is the justice for Dinah? Where is her integrity? How does she move on from where she is? With the idea in her mind that she's raped in a new city. You're in a new city with a ugly problem. You're in a city and you're broken. That daughter will never rise again. You don't hear nothing much about her after that. Her youth was taken away. What make her special was taken away from her by force. But now she got to move on. Now she got to live. There's a lot of broken women in this world. Hurting, broken, abused, bent out of position. And women like these that get married into homes and families, they act weird. They, because they're dealing with a level of trauma that the average person can't deal with. And so they start relationship broken, live in relationship broken, and they live a broken life. And you see them on the street and they smile and they pretend like everything is okay, but it's not okay. Because deep down inside they're crying, deep down inside they're hurting. And then you also have men who has been violated too, not only women. And they've been violated and they're living in the brokenness of this violation. And unless they come to Jesus and Jesus begin to heal, to restore, to make whole again. Marriages don't last, relationships don't last because broken people hurt people. Hmm. And you walk on the street and you see someone and they look normal. But are they? 
there's so much hurt and pain on the inside driven by fear driven by pain driven by a deep place that nobody can understand keeping secret from the people you love because you can't explain the level of shame that you're dealing with on the inside because the people that love you the most you can't even tell them the truth and the whole truth because if you were to tell them the whole truth they couldn't handle it they would probably walk away and leave you divorce you turn their back upon you have nothing to do with you because of the level of pain and so this is where the church of Jesus Christ comes in it's a hospital to restore to mend a broken heart to offer hope Jesus way to offer solidarity to offer peace to heal the past heal the pain and to tell Simeon and Levi, leave that up to Jesus. God will avenge your enemy. That's the church. It's a hospital to offer hope to brokenness. So, Dinah tonight was broken. She was hurting. But when we're broken and hurting, this is where Jesus comes in. He offers peace in the midst of our storms. He gives us a pillow to lay down at night. He gives us peace. And the songwriter said, My anchor holds and Christ the solid rock. I will stand. Because all of the ground is sinking sand. It was the enemy who set up Dinah, she didn't do anything wrong. She just wanted to go for a jog, go for a walk. That is not illegal. And she was violated in a new city. Bow your heads and let me pray tonight. So, Father, we thank you for tonight. We pray thy will be done tonight. Father, we look at the evidence of your word. And nights like these, studies like these, really make us think. Think about Levi and Simeon, Jacob, Shishem, his father, and Dinah. We live in a time and in a world that we're seeing the trace still today. What we did not see, what we did not know, what we did not read is who was behind the rape. It was the enemy. The enemy. He gave Shishem an idea to commit evil. And as a result of that evil idea, Jacob and his entire household was under attack. He has not changed his tactics today. He still is doing the same thing today. God, we have not read tonight that Jacob saw it, identified. We have not seen it tonight that even when the sons decide to take uh, God Almighty matters in their own hands. Who gave them that idea? The Bible didn't say it tonight. But in our time that we live today, we still hear the voice of reason that tells us to do or not to do. The voice of reason sometimes that convinces us to do things that are not pleasing to you. Sometimes we fail 
and sometimes we prevail. But tonight, God, we pray that you will reveal the enemy schemes. Open our eyes. Help us to see. If only we can see, God, we will know what to do to avoid the enemy's plan. Oh, God, we pray for Jacob's family. But most importantly, I pray for every family today under the sound of my voice. They may not be dealing with a rape situation. But they may be dealing with a situation of their own that need rescue. So I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that you show us God where to go, how to go, when to go, if to go, and what to do. Because sometimes the enemy plan and his schemes, it heavy in our spirit. Sometimes it weighs us down. Sometimes it takes away our praise. Sometimes it takes away our shout. Sometimes it takes away our hallelujah. But God, we pray that we will draw strength from you tonight. Only when we draw strength from you, from your vain Oh God Almighty, we will know what to do and how to do it. So we don't take vengeance into our own hands. Help us tonight. Restore unto us tonight the joy of your salvation. Visit every person that is here tonight. Visit every person that's listening on the radio tonight. Every person that's watching on the TV tonight. Give your people strength to go on. That the little boy in us and the little girl in us will sleep and let the God in us arise. Oh God, show us how. Show us how. Show us how, Jesus. Because unless you show us, we will fail. But our aim and our desire, God, is to move forward in you. Our goal, our desire, our ambition is to do your will. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Take away the heaviness. Take away the burdens. Take away those things that we inherited in our bloodline. We wasn't even there. Take it away from us. We know you bless us nonetheless. Oh, Jesus, lead us. Guide us. And protect us. In the name of Jesus. So we surrender all tonight to you. We surrender to you. All that is within us. We surrender. All to you Jesus we surrender. As we separate one from another. Be with us. Cover us, guide us, protect us. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, we honor you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings to all of you. Blessings to all of you. Blessings to all of you. Go with Jesus tonight. Amen cover all of you, your health, your body, your mind, in your going out and in your coming in, cover all of you. The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, who he belongs to Jesus. Hang in there. Keep the faith. 
Don't lose hope. Heart of the battle. Sweeter will be your victory. Jail, God Almighty. Job said, even though he slay me, yet will I trust God. Come on, somebody. In him we live, we move, and have our beings. Mm-hmm. We are the head, not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are lenders and not borrowers. Come on, we are blessed going out. We are blessed coming in. Come on, somebody. Come on. We have been bought with a price, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I was glad when they say unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord, there's pleasure forevermore. God guide you tonight and protect you. That is my prayer. Amen. There's a sweet spirit in here like you want to fall asleep or something. Good night, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless everyone online. Amen. God bless you as you go. Go with Jesus. People of God online, those of you on the radio, God bless you and keep you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And if you're in our area on Sunday, we look forward to seeing you. Won't we? Praise God. Good night, everybody. Pastor Morgan, you all right? One of those days. Deacon is one of those days.